It's five o'clock somewhere, but right now you're rocking with Noonish. I feel like I'm the last man standing. Four, five, sitting on my dresser like a bend. Oh my, why you scared? There ain't no need to panic. I ain't wanna wave, I could sing the ties. Back my, my co-host Donnie Boaz, you know, yes, chilling on top of the on top of the scene over here, man. We got two special guests, Mr. Marquette King. Oh, big boot in the house, baby. That was a good and he made a field goal from the goal line. <laughs> we got nine second yeah, hang time. And he, he, he's punting. I don't know how he did it. <laughs> nah, man, Marquette King from the formerly from the Oakland Raiders in the house, man. I'm trying to get him over here to Dallas, man. You know, we can use uh, some of that swag, he bro. Said, say I had a workout. Say I had a workout. I was supposed to be here. Um, Thanksgiving week. Yeah? Yeah, so, I mean, it, I mean, things happen. Hey, so, man, let's put in a call to Jerry Jones. We're going to get my daughter and put, put a little bug in, in, in Jerry's hey. ear. Like, hey, this is a good guy right here. <laughs> Tell him. Hey, we don't got a leg like that. <laughs> we don't got a leg like that. We need a little more swag. You know what I'm saying? So, Georgia boys and Mr. Hold up. Devontae Davis in the house, man. What's going down, man? So, so are you guys here for the celebrity softball class as yes, well? Yeah. What team you represent tonight? I'm on the blue team. On the so, blue team. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah man. It's all good. We. I mean, Hold on. What team y'all on? We, we, you know, we, we on the red team tonight, bro. We're they can the they, they oh, rocking oh, us yeah. on the red team yeah. tonight. It's all good, man. We're friends now, but good, later bro. tonight. Hey, hey no, we, we friends now. We're not gonna be friends in a little not bit. Later, but then we're gonna be friends hey. after the game. Y'all gonna be trying to hit me with the pitching things when I get up in that box, bro. But hey, you can't stop me, dog. Come on. Man. <laughs> <laughs> now we're gonna have some fun, bro. We're gonna have some fun tonight. Heck yeah. man. Is this your first time coming to this event? It's my this is my first time coming to the event, but I think it's super cool that they're supporting the veterans and stuff. Absolutely. Everything that it's about. Like I I support it, man. So yeah. nothing but respect. You ever thought about it in the military, man? Or? My parents are trying to get me in there, but at the same time, I'm just too goofy. Yeah, like, I wouldn't fit in there. Yeah, hey. Yeah. I, was, I was telling my guy. So we had Mark Cashman on the show Wednesday. I was like, hey, man, I love and respect what you do. My, my yeah. guy Jones, I respect what y'all do, but hey, it ain't for me, dog. You know? Yeah. You know, like uh, DOC was on the show a few weeks ago, and he was like, man, my mama told me. You know, he's yeah. like, hey, my mama told me. It's time for me to go do something. He asked me to go to the exactly. military. He's like, he's like, hey, I called Dre. I was like, hey, <laughs> look, at, me, the, dog. at the same time, it's, that's what the world should be about. Nothing but respect for what everybody do. Because yeah. what everybody do is just different. And it Absolutely. takes a lot of talent to just do a lot of different stuff, period. So, Absolutely, man. Yeah. Anything so, that we can do to support the veterans, yes. I always want to be a part of. Oh, Absolutely, of course. man. Of course. 100%, man. 100%. So, yeah, bro. So, I mean, back to it, you know how... I love that story about how you became a punter, bro. Like, that's just so authentic, dog. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Kicking over the ditch. Kicking over then, the ditch, man. And then moving to the front of the house. <laughs> when, 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 you, when you figured out how to do it to get a little better, right? Yeah. So acquiring that spiral, how'd you get that, man? Because that's a, that's a whole it, different skill. It's weird because, like, as I was kicking over the ditch one day, like, it just happened. Like, I kicked it, and it looked like a throw. And I was like, bro, how do I do that again? Yeah. Like, and, like, I... As you get older, you know, you you become the only person that wants to stay outside. Like, everybody wants to stay inside, play video games yeah. and stuff. And, like, I kept staying outside. And, yeah. And Mark kept kicking, and I saw that spiral. I, was, I wanted to get it again, so I would just keep kicking. So I went from kicking, like, real high and far knuckleballs to kicking spirals. And yeah. it was like, dang. How so, old were you when you started kicking? Man, I was, I, I was that sophomore in uh, high school. That's incredible. Really? Hey, I got a funny story about it. We, play, we, we played, played against, against each, each other. other. Really? He was a quarterback. I didn't know he could kick like that. Yeah. <laughs> I was playing punt return. It was kicking. He kicked the ball. I was like, wait a minute. Did you, <laughs> were, were you uh, way too close on, on the first return? Yeah, so I was way too close. It was like 100 feet, like 1,000 feet. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, like that's a five and a half second of hang time. I'm still waving. Bro, it was funny because we got ready to play against each other and then we were watching film of uh, Crawford County and then they showed him, they showed his picture and everything and they were like, look, they put him in when they're in trouble because yeah. he's, he's really good. Yeah. He should have been starting the whole time, but like, yeah. he's the quarterback? a quarterback. He's a quarterback. Wow. So like, I saw it and I was like, bro, I'm going to play against my cousin. Like, I didn't know he played here. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Hey, a victim Great. of the South. Yes. <laughs> wow. I can see you booting the ball and then being the one running down the field making the tackle. I'm down to do that. Yeah, I've like seen you do that before, right? Yeah, I've done yeah. it before. Yeah, I've seen that, bro. Because I don't want nobody to chop up my net yards, you feel me? Yeah, yeah, bro. <laughs> Can't do that, dog. I can't chop my net yards. That's my chick. <laughs> 
gotta, we gotta eat around here. That's man. what I'm saying. So, was that the only position you played in high school back, back I in the day? I played receiver too. Okay, cool. Dude. Yeah, so if I would have stayed at receiving, Odell Beckham would have never had a job. Mm. <laughs> Is that, yeah. is that the truth? That's the truth. You had them feet, man? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I got them feet. I got the feet work. Had them hands? If I would have stuck with basketball, Steph Curry wouldn't have a job. Oh, yeah? Too bad, man. Just like that? Hey, my boy on, on Wednesday <laughs> said he started playing soccer when he was 32 and said uh, he was better than Ibrahimovic, bro. I was like, God, dog, Good bro. Job. Better? Good you job. don't know Ibrahimovic, bro? I don't and he know. Went out, he was in L.A. too, right? All right, Oakland, L.A. I, I, well, put, I put Cali same on the same, yeah, yeah. same, same thing. pot of stew to me, yeah. right? Ibrahimovic, that's the last time. Nobody oh, moves man. more than the Raiders do. Yeah, you're right. Oakland, L.A., you Oakland, know. L.A., Oakland, L.A., Vegas. Oakland, Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, my bro. God. So I was, have you seen that new stadium in Vegas? That thing looks sick, though. It is bro. a monster. I a video of the stadium, yeah. but I kind of got sick. Yeah? I want to play there so bad. Yeah, you, you want to get there? <laughs> I want to play there. I thought I was going to play there. Well, so, what, I mean, I, don't, I ain't trying to get in your business yeah, no, no. All, but, I mean, that, what happened? Because I mean, you were bro, you were a weapon. Yeah, it um field position is serious in the NFL. I know, I know, it's super important. But um, I don't know things just didn't work out, man. It, yeah, it just didn't work out. I never got a chance to meet the actual coach for the team, but sure, I wish them well. I yeah. hope they have a lot of success. But um, yeah, I actually he, thought, like, I was looking, bro. I was looking into houses for looking at getting in Vegas and stuff. So yeah, yeah, yeah. That would have been like, a thirty minute fight. This punter, the most popular punter I ever has had in my life, man. man. We can't have a punter getting this yeah. much shine. <laughs> you was getting shine, dog, everywhere. Bruh, you know what I'm was, saying? It was fun, man. But you know what? Ultimately, it, it's just spreading positivity. Like yeah. it, it, it's good vibes, man. Absolutely, so like, bro. Absolutely, yeah. man. Now, looking forward to seeing you back in that league, bro. It's so, going to happen. Like I said, man, I think before you was Reggie Roby, dog. And Reggie kicked for like 40 years. Yeah, he kicked for he, a while. He was the last dude wearing one bar in the league, dog. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, shout out to Greg Coleman, too, man. Yeah. Shout out to Greg Coleman, man. He's a huge mentor for me. First black nice. punter to ever kick in the league. Wow. So he's a, he's a huge mentor for me, man. That's awesome, bro. Heck That's yeah. awesome. Yeah, man. Jerry, you know. You gotta get you down here. You know Michael Irvin's here, dog. Hey, Mike. You know, we know you got Good influence, people. dog. Good people, man. You know what I'm saying? You know, yeah. hey, we got an Atlanta boy right here rocking the Dallas Cowboys <laughs> yeah, on his chest. I like I it. Man. I respect it. Hey, that's much respect. Understanding what's going on in Atlanta is just not good for anybody's health. You know what I'm saying? Hey, they've been they've been trying to sell that boy uh, Matt Matt Ryan for Matty how many Ice. years now? No hey. Hey, Mike, <laughs> hey, Michael Vick, baby. Michael Vick country, man. That's a homie, concerned. though. Michael, you know. Vick, Michael Vick inspired me to play for, like, quarterback. Yeah. When I seen Vick play for the first time, he was like, I want to do that. He yeah. was walking yeah. on water. Exactly. I tried yeah. to, like, emulate every move yeah. from his drop bats, his throwing moves. Were you, were you left? Everything. You righty? I'm a righty. Righty? Yeah, but still. I tried to still. emulate everything about Vick. Yeah, man. Like, he was, like. That guy. Hey, yeah. he, to me, he was Air Jordan in the NFL, bro. For real, for real. He was exactly. a game changer. Everything switched over. Yeah. Because, yeah. hey, when I saw him make two defenders hit each other on that, that run. That was crazy. That was, that was wild. Yeah, the Vikings, dog. Like, I was like, this dude here is running, like, I don't it's even like know. like he's floating. Yeah, bro. Like, bro, they can't even calculate this man's speed right now. Yeah, for real. He should be in the Hall of Fame, like, ASAP. Absolutely. Yeah, Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely, bro. Because he's. A game changer, man. It's unfortunate what happened to him, you know, for those two years. I think that's just to hey, take some of them stats and slow him down a little bit because Falcons shouldn't have been in the league, in, in the playoffs against Green Bay doing they what they were doing. They took him out in his prime. Yeah. And that hurt my heart, man. Yeah, dude. No human being should be locked up for an animal ever yeah. in the history. Find him. Yeah. Make him lose his well, $200 million. At the same time. Dollars. Take $200 million in contract and lock him up for two yeah, years. Bro. That was wild. We kill a billion chickens a year. We kill a billion cows a year. Yeah, yeah. But you're just going to lock this it's, man up in the middle of his prime? He going to make you more than $200 million in revenue, and you put him in jail? <laughs> yeah, that Come on, you know, IRS. Though, you got to be smarter what, than that. What a, lot of, what a lot of people don't think about, though, is a lot of people make mistakes, and the people that are really crucial on judging people for the mistakes that they've made are usually the ones that's made the most mistakes, but it's behind closed doors, so a lot of people don't see it. Yeah. But, um, shoot, man, like, People, man, make, just, people make mistakes and people hey, grow. That did, that did give him a place in the record book. He's the only quarterback to ever get $200 million contracts. Yeah. So yeah. Hey. he has the record. And worth every life, penny, man. bro. And worth every penny, man. Like, I wish punters got paid like that. Hey, 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 hey man. <laughs> hey, for, for, bro, like them cats out there. I mean, y'all got people rushing at you, dog, but not like no, that. I know, I know, I know. Because if punters got $100 million contracts, 
I have a helicopter part right there by the studio. Oh, that was yours? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yes, sir. Fucking next to Jerry. You know what I'm saying? Jerry, I don't know if Jerry got a car, man. He's like, hey, fire that chopper up, boys. Let's go to Papa John's. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, bro. So, no, it's, it's been a pleasure to meet you, man. I appreciate you coming and spending a little time with us, bro. Best of luck Thank with your you. career, man. I'm hey. looking forward to seeing it. Absolutely, Thank bro. You. you got a long, you got a lot of, lot of legs. A lot of boot left. You got a lot of legs. You got a lot of tunes. Like, yeah. We just, it's just yeah. all hey, about, Where can man. people find your music right now, bro? I got music on Spotify, Apple, everything, all platforms. Uh, Market King, is that, is that the Market rap King. name? That's so the name. Ain't, ain't like strip, ain't got the stage I, I thought about creating the alias name, but yeah. I was like, nah, I'm going to just stick with it because I, I worked so hard to just I have my name up that. there. So. Yeah, yeah, right but, on, um, bro. Yeah, I just right. dropped, the, dropped the video called Airbnb with professional regular guy. And, yep. um it's out there, so right y'all out there, go check it out. Oh, I gotta check you out, bro. I ain't know you're into the music, but I yeah. gotta, I gotta support you, bro. I gotta Thanks support a lot, you, man. man. Hey, when you get a chance, hey, go, go, get, get, click on Noonish, bro. We here yeah, yeah, every yeah. Wednesday, bro. Get it in, man. Go ahead and Absolutely. boot it from here. Drop it in the hole in the stadium. Jerry, not gonna be able to tell you no. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, Where'd man. that come from? <laughs> <laughs> no, but definitely appreciate you coming on, Thank man. You, man. We're gonna let you go on about your day, man. Thank Enjoy that screwball whiskey right there, dog. It's hitting, dog. Y'all should, mm -hmm. I'm telling y'all should put this with some chicken tenders because yeah. it's almost like chicken and waffles. -ish. Hey, we will. We will. Hey, we had, um, so we had a, a, one of our sponsors came on, brought us some cinnamon rolls, bro. Oh my God. Y'all drunk on, y'all drunk this with the cinnamon rolls? Yeah, so it's not cinnamon, it was maple, ma maple bacon cinnamon, cinnamon rolls. Good bro. God, bacon. what? Had maple, maple bacon. bacon. Yes, bro. She had some strawberry cinnamon See, I can't rolls. hang around y'all. I'm going to get high blood pressure. Bro, hey, I'm talking, uh, Isaiah Stanback was on that show with us, bro. Before I could stop talking about her, his first cinnamon roll was gone. She brought like 10, dog. <laughs> I was like, dang, I'm halfway through mine. He's like, hit the Jameis Winston on me, dog. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> dope, <y 'all. laughs> You know? <laughs> we gonna get a W today. Right. <laughs> yeah, no, man, it's been great, bro. Really appreciate y'all stopping by to chop it up with us for a second, man. Thank you, man. Absolutely Thank you. appreciate you, Devontae. Definitely, uh, before we get off, I, I see you out on the field tonight. Dog. I'm asking them inspiring business and Arthur. Yeah? Yes, definitely. So, I actually got a book coming out. Uh, it's called Passion Over Circumstances. That's amazing, bro. Yes. So, I'm working in the works right Very now. Sweet. Yeah. So, I got a wristband, which I'm going to give you guys some. Before. Passion Over Circumstances? Passion Over Circumstances. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm where, where, can we find, where can the people find you, bro? Oh, I'm actually in, in, in um, Miss the Creative website right now. Yeah. So, I'll get it out there. Yeah. But definitely, uh, I'm just trying to inspire people. You yeah, know, yeah. No matter we all go through circumstances in life. Absolutely. You know, we all got passion also. Yeah. So no matter what we go through, just keep that passion and keep it going. Yeah, passion no, over man. circumstance, no victim mentality. Exactly. You're gonna conquer it no matter what. Absolutely. I respect that, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's, it's so absolutely. many people out here that got yes, similar stories and don't even realize exactly. that you yep. absolutely use that, bro. Yes, no matter what absolutely, life puts man. in your path, you can conquer it. Absolutely. You can. Perfect. Nothing keeps you down. Absolutely. Yeah, don't yeah. let them tell you that you gotta stay down. You don't have to. Yes, sir. Yes. I love it, man. I love Big it. facts. Yeah. Big trucks. <laughs> Big facts. <laughs> <laughs> right on, man. Well, yeah, Gentlemen, one thank more you. time. Absolutely, Marquette King, Devontae Davis, passion over circumstances. Yes, Big boot coming near you sometime soon, baby. Let's go. Let's get it. All right, Appreciate all right. It, man. Thanks for the love, bro. Absolutely, bro. Thank you. You gonna give me a ride in that chopper sometime? Thank you, bro. In action, on the noonish. I got my DJ going hard, you know, on the ones and twos, DJ JD, man. You can catch him on a Saturday Thank night you. down Thank in you. Deep Ellum. Thank man, you. making the people dance and pop, they shake they rumps, you know what I mean? Yeah, back with my, my co-host, my special guest co-host, Donnie Boaz in the yes, house, sir. man. And we got a couple new awesome guests in the house. Mr. Carl McDowell, yes, correct? Sir. Yes, yes, sir. sir. And Mr. Christopher, Chris Dowling. Dowling, yeah. I'll take Christopher. <laughs> hey, man, Christopher, I just, you know, so I came up watching. or the Jonathan, I'll do Christopher. Yeah, thank you guys so much thank you, man. for uh, joining the show, man, joining Noonish. I don't know if you guys have heard of us before. A lot of people haven't because we're fairly new on the scene, but we are a sports and technology focused you know, show, podcast, They talk podcast, about everything under the sun. And talk really? about everything under the sun. Y'all want to talk about it? Let's talk about it. I want to talk. I want to talk about everything. You look like you could put some words together. <laughs> so, yeah, so are, are you guys here for the Celebrity Softball event? Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's y'all first time here. Have y'all been a part of it before? Uh, uh, I've not been a part of it. He was, was I did home? one. I did, we did a Texas OU game. I went to UT. Nice. So, uh, Welcome. 
We, yeah, hook them for sure, man. Yeah, so we got to uh, do that two years ago. So that was fun. And then so I came back for this. And then, uh, you know, Carl and I played some softball in, uh, when I was in, in LA. LA. So I called up my boy and said. Uh, so y'all are homies in LA. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, hey, my boy Valley, uh, Donnie, I was about to call him volleyball. Then volleyball. my boy Donnie was out there playing that volleyball on the, in the, on the beaches, man. Oh, y'all get out there and get that's, a little that's bit that's after the Oh, man. You did? We get to the beach every once in a while. I like putting wow. spalling on the side of somebody's face. Uh, yeah, man. <laughs> I like putting Spalding on the side of somebody's face. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you wouldn't. We would let you play with us because we were real low key on volleyball. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we were not good. Low key, like low, like all the way low key, like low key, on the no. sideline. What part of LA? Oh, yeah, pretty much. Just right above that. Okay, I yeah. live across the street from the Grove Palazzo. I like the Grove West. Palazzo. Yeah, oh, I, like I was working at CBS the last two years on Young and the Restless, and so it was nice to just walk across the street get to over work, there, yeah. get over there. I, I got lost in the Palazzo once, the yeah. elevator system. <laughs> oh, man. It's an easy place to get lost in. <laughs> That's what I, I got lost, I got lost, but I found where I was going. I was waiting for my friend to get there. He never got there. He fell asleep in the elevator. And we <laughs> <laughs> fell asleep in the elevator? Hey, he just go up and down How all does that going happen? up and down all night? We, I had a buddy when we were in our, our uh, Cancun um, senior class trip. And we were all on the, on the, like two in the morning, we were all on the, on the bus going home. Uh -huh. And he was asleep. And we were like, man, we all got off. And then he just rode the bus the entire <laughs> night. And he woke up and was like, well, it was like, sun was out and everything. And he wakes still up on the in bus. San Diego. Yeah, he was on the bus to the like, around, around, around the whole night. So. Hey, you've been punked. <laughs> yeah, with no cameras around. Yeah. That's yeah, for cell phones, too. I mean, so it's like you can just we can, He just had to find his way back to the hotel. That's, that's incredible, man. That's yeah. incredible. So, We're good friends. Uh, so you guys know each other from, do y'all work together in the past or just meeting each other in L.A. type deal? We were friends. Like, we had a big friend group. We would play sports together. We would, nice. like, do holidays together. Yeah. I know his family. Uh, and then he's a director, and he invited me to do one of his movies. That's awesome. That's yeah, awesome. So that, yeah, so we finally got to work together. We've been hanging mm -hmm. for a long time, but it was finally cool to be able to, like, you know, do the friendship thing and make it. And make a movie, thing. and and it was like in Nashville. It was yeah, in Nashville, Nashville, so like we was away from LA. It was, it was really cool. It was a cool experience. So you still directing? I mean, are you writing? Yeah, it? Writing, like, yeah writing, that's, that's not that's something awesome, you bro. just stop doing. Yeah, yeah, I was about to say that's a lifestyle choice. My wife choice would be very upset if I stopped doing it. Yeah. <laughs> we so, made a choice, baby. You're gonna finish. Yeah, it. I, I stood for you for 20 years while you tried to do oh, this, man. So you guys, man, you guys get to act. For a living, bro. Like that's I love it. that's I love pretty it. incredible, man. Love my job. I love yeah. it. What film did you guys do together in Nashville? Well, it's, it's a movie called Roll with It. It's actually like a, um, I'm obsessed with all things '80s, and so it's kind of got like this cool '80s. It's a comedy. It's a karaoke comedy, um, but it's kind of got that '80s vibe. Like it's not set in the '80s, but just kind of that irreverent. Like you can just kind of sit back and enjoy it, not overthink it. You know what I mean? And yeah. it's um, we I just finally got to show it to him last night. It's yeah. like you know, it's inspirational I it, man. and um, I and, it. yeah, yeah, it's, it's such a fun like. Like I'll, I'll watch movies, but and I'm not like impressed or like it just doesn't sit well with me. Or yeah. this movie I can watch over and over. Like you know, you get those movies where you can just watch it over and yeah. over. Yeah, that's what this is. It's kind of like a John Hughes kind of thing. Like, bro, yeah. it's just something it's just you can fun. watch it's over just... and over again. But yet you're a part of it, and that's the treat. And that's what I love about film. It lives forever. Yeah, at least forever. the next hundred. Hey, in the eighties was, was a wild time, bro. Between crack, rock and roll. Hip hop, <laughs> yeah. big hair. Say crack again. And crack. <laughs> <laughs> Rock and roll. Yeah. And, and the windsuits, everybody. And the, and the big puffy the yeah. Yeah, yeah, hammer but, pants, bro. Like, it was a wild time back well, in the day. Well, it's funny. We're talking about agents and stuff, too. But I don't know if you even know this, but Carl's character was originally the only person we went out to was Huey Lewis to wow. play your role, actually. Because we, you know, we, we were in until we talked with him. Like, uh, really? Yeah. Uh, but. But then when Huey couldn't do it, I was like, man, I, I mean, Huey's not doing it. I'm not going down that path anymore. So I was like, let me call my boy Carl. Yeah. We're going to switch it up just a little bit. Yeah. yeah. That's, yeah. That's, that's, that's a natural yeah. progression from Huey to me. Yeah. I think that's how it naturally goes. Yeah, yeah. You can't get Huey Lewis, you get hey, me. Yeah, yeah, you guys are always typecast <laughs> together against each other. I know. Yeah, that's so, a great that's company hilarious. to be in. I'm I hear you, that man. all the time. We can't get McConaughey. Call Donnie. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'll take it. That's another certain boy right there, you know? Yeah, but no, it's fun. I mean, that the movie, we, you know, we that movie's kind of a victim of the COVID, where you know we were going to be out in theaters in, in uh, last October, and then now we're just still trying to figure out the plan of attack. I mean, is it like a streamer now? Is it, you know, um, are we going back out in theater? Like we, so we're still trying to figure out where we land. But like the music's fun. I mean, it's got it's got Huey Lewis in it. It's yeah. got Steve Winwood, like Wang Chung, like it's Katrina so and the Waves. Like it's got all these great like '80s songs in it that yeah. they're doing and stuff. And, Bro, so we had a blast. with everything going on in California with COVID and all the setbacks we obviously had, your industry, the entertainment industry was hit like, yeah, yeah like a hurricane, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, where is there a place that you guys see as the next Hollywood 
in up and, like up and coming Hollywood? Is there Atlanta? a specific location? Georgia. Atlanta? Atlanta's yeah, not Georgia. Atlanta's got music, Atlanta, man. Man. It's going the on? Hollywood of the South right now. As yeah. I said, for the last five years, they have grossed more money in film than any other market in the world. Even LA. Well, yeah, Tyler Perry went and brought that studio out. He got man. two studios now. He just bought his second $20 million dollar studio. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. Incredible. You're making that kind of money. Let's yeah. get another studio. Yeah. But now, yeah. here's a story about Tyler Perry. During COVID, he didn't let it shut him down too long, but he sequestered you to the lot. Yeah. Once you were picked up from the airport by your caravan, you came to the lot. You didn't leave. So it was kind of like the Every, bubble. It was a bubble. Everything was brought to you, food. Your girlfriend ain't getting on the lot. Yeah. I mean, Damn. you're there by yourself. And, and depending on how long you were there filming, it could be two weeks, it could be six months. They owned you, but yeah. you're getting paid for that. But Yeah, that's the other part is now, you you know, you go through the quarantines and stuff, but like now that production has to pay that actor for the two weeks, the cameraman, for the, like especially like up in, you go in Canada right now, it's crazy with it. So like my buddies that are going out there to shoot in Toronto or Vancouver, like the first thing you do is you get there. One of my buddies, he went up there and he's like, I'm gonna bring my dog. He's the lead on the show. He's like, I'm gonna bring my dog so at least I can walk my dog twice a day and get out. Because you know, they really, they, they got someone that checks on you in the hotel that comes twice a day. And he said, so he brought his dog and the first day he got a knock on the door and someone's there and like, hi, Amazon sent me, I'm your dog walker. So he couldn't even leave to walk his dog. Oh there. my gosh. <laughs> Wow. You and I offset here, we were talking about the freedom of Los Angeles, and you were talking about, I've never seen anything like Texas. I mean, this, no. this I've, yeah, I've, I've been to 20 since states. Since 2019. I've been to 20 <laughs> states since, <laughs> in 2021, yeah. okay. and it's crazy how America is just different. Every state is different. Yeah. I was in Texas and Mississippi, which was wide open, but Louisiana, right in the middle, like I was rock climbing and they wanted you to spray the rock on your way up while putting a mask on. It's like, man. I mean, it, it, and it's like, did COVID just skip over states? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Georgia was 50-50, <laughs> but no place was locked down like California and New York. Yeah. It's like that place. New York well, was the epicenter. Like right. that, you know, you know, had the in in California man. and Hawaii both are, I think, the only states that still have the indoor mandate where you have to wear a mask indoors. Still? Still. Well, Jeez. California, June 16th, we, 16. done, we done with everything. But I mean, I think I'm gonna still wear my mask for a while. Cause I, yeah. It's just, it's like me not wearing a mask out here is like freaking me out. It's just a different world. It's a Texas. different world. Yeah. Like the, I, I see nobody who said there's the world and then there's Texas. <laughs> and that's exactly the I, truth. I man. picked Carl from the airport. He comes out with a big mask. He's looking around. <laughs> Everyone's walking by. And nobody he's wearing look masks. Looking like Darth Vader. He had two masks, yeah. face shield, yeah. hazmat yeah. suit, oxygen mask. I mean, when he sat down in the car with me, he still had it on. I want to be like, hey, man, you're safe here. It's all good. Yeah, you're safe here, buddy. It's Texas. It's Texas. I do not have it. He and I were talking about there's just a mass exodus yeah. out of California. Yeah. Every actor friend I know oh, yeah. moved out of there just so their kids could go to school, so they could walk outside without somebody yelling at them about a mask. And I, I'm well, telling you, it was a different world out there. But it's not even, I mean, and it's all, there's just waves, man. Like, so um, this was the first time ever, at least in my career, I've been out there, 20, I get like 23, 24 years, where I went, hey, if I leave, it's not career suicide because now the way the Pandora's yeah. box has been open, yep. everybody's shuffling, moving it out, everything is Zoom meetings, Zoom pitch meetings, Zoom castings, like it's all. And as soon as now that it's settling back, when, once it settles back a little more and, and the people that are left in California still realize, oh wait, we can't, the new normal is now, it is Zoom everything still, you're gonna have another wave that's going out of there. I like there's still that. some people that are waiting to kind of see how it oh, shakes yeah. out. Oh, but yeah. I mean, I, I'm, it, it, I, I can't, like, I'm with you. I've got friends that have moved, I mean, places where I'm like, really? But where? it doesn't matter. They're just getting out because they can, and they're working. I'm at Topeka, Kansas. Yeah. Why? I had a buddy that moved to Kansas. Yeah, he yeah. was like, he, got a fa he has a family, and he got, got a big house, and he was like, you know what? Why am I, you know, living in a two-bedroom apartment paying 3500 you know, a month when I can you go You could have a house. Yeah. Uh, you could have a five-bedroom, five-bathroom house, five acres, working pond. For the same price you're paying for that two bedroom, one bathroom condo that you had in LA. Hey, so is this is this where we all turn and tell Carl this is actually <laughs> this, this is an intervention. Like okay. Carl, this, this is, is an I'll intervention. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> all right, I'm still paying rent in LA right now. I did huh. sublease it out for the next two months. But I asked my manager, I was like, what should I do? He goes, I don't know if they're gonna do any live auditions until after Labor Day. Yeah. And it's just like so did still. You, not, you couldn't break well, did you not want to break your lease? Because I broke my lease one like when COVID hit, I was like, I'm breaking my lease, I'm getting out of this. Three thousand dollar a month apartment, yeah. and yeah. I'm downgrading, and because I'm going to be here for a year. They started giving COVID time. prices. That's the thing, because I went and checked it out right when I booked Young and the Restless, oh, and okay. it was like forty five hundred a month. I was like, okay, that's a, 
That's a little much. This is the first time in the history of ever that I heard the real estate people say we're running out of inventory. Oh, dude, in Dallas, LA, right? No, it's like, in Texas, what? California's wide open. Like, what? You know, but, but, but apartment wise, but if you want to buy a house, there's still California people are coming here paying 20% over in cash because yeah. all the money they money. just got for selling what they had. Well, there. And, and it's it, like if you think about it, if you're in California and you're buying a house, you're probably leaving a house. People aren't moving into California, right? So it's like you're leaving another house for someone else to buy. Everyone here in Texas is just consuming. There's people coming yeah. in from the coast, from they Chicago. They can't build fast yeah. enough. And, they, yep. and they're stopping building right now too. I just, I'm like, so where we're at, there's a lot of new builds up there. And most of those places have started shutting them down to catch up. And because lumber is so expensive right now, lumber is lumber is raising like That's these houses. Crazy. Yeah. Dude, yeah. these houses, are, everything's going up, bro. Yeah. Everything's going up. And the one thing you cannot make is land, bro. And I'm talking about we're running out of space. I never thought that was going to happen down here in Dallas, man. It's so absolutely bad. Did not. No, it's just going out now. Now, yeah, now. But we're going to be at the border. Honestly, we're yeah. taking all the way to Oklahoma. It's pretty wild. Yep, yeah, it's crazy, bro. And, I mean. It, I can't lie. I mean, I like to drive much better going north when I got something to look at versus a bunch of trees and sticks, right? <laughs> so it, it makes that drive much better, you know, heading up north where you got to head to, you know? Like, hey, yeah. I, it seems a little quicker at least. I can say that much, right? Yeah. I will no, say man. that once everybody leaves California, I'll be there loving life. Like, yeah, I can't wait for everybody. But just go, everybody go the to thing Texas is, the real estate in LA hasn't gone down because they're smart enough to know it's going to yeah. come back. Like, you, know, you know, our pocket, like Venice, has gotten thrashed because of all the homeless right here. Honestly, I, I read that Venice, the Venice property values have actually fallen 10 to 20% because really? nobody wants to move in there right now Like, because it is crazy. My buddy, um, I had, a, I had a, Zoom, a Zoom call with a uh, producer about a project and he missed the call. He texted me, he's like, man, I'm sorry. And he was like, we had a little issue at the house. And I was like, oh, man, thinking like wife and him probably got into it or something. But then he hit me back an hour later, and he had a dude that was living in his alley. And he's got a million-dollar house, and the guy just took off all his clothes and started, like, taking a dump on his fence and oh yelling at God. his kids and his wife in the backyard. And there's nothing yeah, you can yeah. do. Oh, it's man. like, so they, they, have like, got, they have, like, homeless encampments yeah, all over this beach. Yeah, he's got a It's, 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 it's kind of wild. I lived off of Hollywood oh, Boulevard. Dude. For about five, six years, and I'm telling you, it, it's just his son, my nephew, we're family, um, couldn't walk down the street with him. I mean, it's just homeless people everywhere. Guys yeah. literally passed out, foaming from the mouth, and I'm trying to hide his yeah. innocent eyes. And it's yeah. like, it's yeah. still like that. Like I live on in Los Feliz, but off Hollywood Boulevard. Yep. And like if I go to the freeway, it's just all homeless, 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 homeless. It's insane. They pulled me over. Uh, I guess this was right when curfew happened. I was out past 10 p.m. I went to a drive-in movie theater. I was like, there's something I can do outside. And I got pulled over at 10.15 because curfew was 10 o'clock. Oh and gosh. I was just like, sir, I'm on my way home. Just dropped my friend off. And I was like, did you not see the 10,000 people on Hollywood Boulevard? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was yeah, like, like, you had to pull me over. Pull me over, man, because I'm driving the night. Uh, but the no vehicle. rest of the country just wasn't like that. L.A. Yeah. just took it to another place. Thank you, Garcia. That's what Cali does, man. That's what Cali does, man. That's what Cali take your ass home and go to sleep. But, uh, no, nah, man, it's... Uh, Pretty wild. I'm glad we're getting past that. You know. Thank you, June Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Let's be done with this COVID. Cali's opening please. back up, y'all. Yeah. You know, still going. You get out there and go. You know, flood the streets, y'all. Just go do the actual. <laughs> you know, have fun, man. But so, so what's next for you guys, man? And, and where can we, where can the people go and find you guys? Websites, any uh, social media? Like, where, you know, where can they find uh, you guys? Instagram, Carl D McDowell. Facebook, Carl McDowell. Uh, what I'm doing next? Waiting to find out. Yeah. See, we'll see. How, yeah. how are the auditions for you right now? Auditions are good. Um, I mostly been doing commercial stuff, like so okay. commercial auditions. Are you still doing uh, taped auditions for commercials? Yeah. Well, taped or Zoom. Okay. So like we haven't been in person anymore. I talked to my manager. And I'm hoping there, that, there was I'm a hoping. three week gap, and he goes, "Look, the industry's just deciding what they're going to do next, which avenue." So I didn't do anything for three weeks. This last week, I think I had 12 auditions, taped auditions sitting in. It just, all of a sudden, they know what they're going to do, and you're heading in that way. You know what the thing is, so, like, I, I'm in L.A., and I've just been doing all commercial auditions. And any time I book a trip somewhere or go somewhere is when the auditions come flooding in. I got three self-tapes that I got to do in Monday. <laughs> hey, I, I got a guy you can tape with, and yeah. I'm sure he's got a studio in his house or not. But if not, I got a guy in Plano he can tape for you. I'll get you. I'll get you Done. the info, man. Thank you. Man. <laughs> no, 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 I, no. I've got a Rolodex in my phone of places all over the country. Whether I'm in New Orleans, Miami, Atlanta, I, somebody I can tape with. Craziest thing is I have 20 people I can tape with in LA for a taped audition. 
somebody's like, oh, sorry, everybody was afraid of COVID. Finally, somebody's like, I can tape you in April, but you have to have the vaccine. And I was just like, okay, I have the vaccine. Let's see. <laughs> <laughs> I got to get this tape in. Here, here's this card. It's written in crayon, but it says, uh, <laughs> <laughs> dated today. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Sure, bro. And, and we're going to be with Lon Zoo, man. And what's next for you? Uh, yeah, man, I've got, um, I've got some pretty cool projects coming up. I've got a musical that we're supposed to be shooting in Nashville at the end of the year. Um, and then uh, there's a, a guy, Little Jimmy Dickens, who's like a longest tenured act ever at uh, the Grand Ole Opry. He's so, like 4'11", well, yeah, he, he, he's 4'7", or something he's, like that. He's little, little Jimmy. I, I little didn't Jimmy. say big Jimmy Dickens, yeah, he's <laughs> yeah. little Jimmy Dickens. He's so uh, tiny. And, um, like and so, so we're doing his biopic, um, and, uh, and that's a cool, it's like a 1968 to 71 Nashville country music, Grand Ole Opry, like it's a really cool, so we got that one coming up that we'll be shooting uh, next year, and um, uh, yeah, and there's a couple, there's Football project. There's there's a lot of stuff happening, which is cool. Um, yeah. I had some good stuff in there now because of Blue Miracle. We started to get a lot more income and stuff. That's like been been pretty cool. But um, I mean, for me, it's good because I like to stay home and write. Yeah. Because uh, I got family and stuff. Like, so I want to be around them. Yeah. And when I go shoot yeah. a movie, I'm gone for three months. So. Hey man. That kind of stuff. Understanding wife. That's incredible, yeah, 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 bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, so. I just want to say, you know, when it comes to this music game, all right, like I got a distant, not distant. It was my grandmother's first cousin, sister Rosetta Tharp. She Let it rain. Elvis oh, Presley. I love her. She influenced. She's the godmother of okay. rock and roll, man. She's right? sick. Yeah, yeah. So you related to her? That's my grandmother's first cousin, man. So my mama's got crazy stories about I saw him bending the rain. I was like, oh, what's Rosetta up to now? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> awesome. So it blew my mind when I found out yeah, that this cool. you know, you know, Nashville. I'm just thinking about Elvis Presley anytime I hear somebody. Have they done anything on her? No, they haven't. That's what I'm telling you, that man. Can't, so uh, can't God, go wrong with this. She's here, bro. good, yeah, man. Absolutely. Play guitar. She yeah, like she's, murdered the guitar. She's, hip, she, she's a mad. First one. <coughs> yeah. About to look at that guitar. Like she strums that guitar, man. And look at make Beatles influence. Let it rain. Make it rain. What Elvis Presley. Uh, Johnny Cash influence. Yeah, yeah, we'll, yeah but, uh, we'll have to look it up. Yeah, man, look it up, man. That's, that's my family. I had to, had to kick that one out. <laughs> man, that's cold. But no, man, I definitely appreciate you guys coming oh, on. Oh, thanks for having us, man. Anytime. Great time, man. Anytime. Great time. Anytime. Pleasure meeting you, man. What Absolutely. team are you guys on? Red team. Red, red, team. red, red, red team. team. Oh, yeah, we got that. We can never talk about that, baby. Let's go. We're going to get that softball in, mate. Okay, softball. Yes, sir. I noticed y'all had this blue kind of hidden back here. It's kind of hiding behind the screwball and the glasses, you know, but, you know, we still got to represent. That's right. But, no, man, definitely appreciate you guys. Hey, if you don't get a chance, go subscribe to Noonish. We'll do it, man. We'll do it. some water or something. But subscribe to Noonish. Click like, leave a comment or something. But, man, Definitely appreciate it. Yeah, thank you guys. Appreciate you guys. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank All right, that's fun, man. We're back live, you know, in front of you guys, man. Back with two more special guests. We're going to keep the party rolling. Man, we've got Mr. Josh Amos joining yes, us. Sir. Right? And Mr. Edgar Jones What's going in the on? house. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and that dude on the end is kind of big, ain't he? Y'all think he play? You know, I play guy cricket. Out, guy out here playing marbles. I tell you that, much, <laughs> You know, so former what? Kansas City Chiefs. And yeah, I'm gonna start with the Baltimore Ravens first. And B Mo, man. That's my heart. It's so still my you, heart. Were you and Mark? Were y'all teammates? Me and Mark played with each other. Right on, bro. Uh, my rookie year, we met each other. So I was in Baltimore for five years. Right on. Uh, then Kansas City for a year, then the Chiefs yeah. for a year, and then a little bit with the Browns. Yeah. Uh, retired in 2015. That's incredible, bro. Yeah, Mark, he's here every week, man. I make, you know, yeah. I call him always on time, and he hates it, dog. Yeah. <laughs> That's why we call him Nunes. Yeah, Nunes. <laughs> That's for you, Mark. <laughs> oh, man, he knows what's up, man. Yeah. So, yeah, bro, absolutely appreciate you guys coming on to join us, man, for oh, this for spectacular me. event, man, out here at the 2021 Celebrity Softball Classic, man, out here raising money for our awesome military and the, and the veterans and the troops, man. It's a real deal. Holy feel out here, man. What team are you gentlemen on crazy. tonight? I'm on the red team. Red yeah, I'm, team. A, I'm on the blue team. Blue yeah. team? That's all yeah. good. We got to bang you up tonight, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Man, we can be friends right now. Hey, At the end know? of the day, we're all on the same team. It's all friends the same before team. and after, but I see you on the field. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm man. glad we're not playing football. I don't want to get hit by him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. So I was talking with Josh before this thing, man, before we got started. You got a pretty incredible story, man, with the, your homie is the founder of Screwball, man. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Of Noonish. Yeah, so uh, uh, I met Steve years ago. Uh, he's got a couple bars out in San Diego, uh, OB Noodle House and another one called THC, yeah. a holding company. And uh, he used to sell, uh, it was uh, 
peanut butter whiskey shots that he yeah. had pre-made. It was a kind of a creamy mixture. And everybody used to go there, like five dollars a shot all day, all the time. Everybody loved it. Go to their Incredible. venues to go drink that peanut butter whiskey. Yeah. One day, a buddy of mine called me. He said, "Hey, Steve's a personal friend of mine, yep. and uh, he's actually going to uh, uh, develop this. He's going to make it into something." Yeah. And uh, here we are. It's it's like second most popular whiskey next to Jack Daniels or something. Here we right are. Now. Got a peanut butter a whiskey left in this bad boy. Looks like whiskey tastes like peanut butter. Yeah, it's pretty pretty popular drink around yeah. here around Nunes, man. Yeah. House favorite. Goes, goes, goes great in coffee. Right here. Hey, Thank I you so want, much. I just want to see your face, man. We got to get our toast in the house. <laughs> so we do a PED toast, man. It's a performance hands and drinks. Just making sure you're ready for the show. Yeah. Oh, that's thank good. you. <laughs> Appreciate it. Yeah, man. Let's go ahead and, and crack off another. Can get a little top <laughs> off right here? Anything for you, Kim Thank folks. You, sir. I appreciate it, Debo. That's, that's, that's Debo. That's <laughs> Debo right here, Mr. Donnie Boaz. If y'all missed the last three segments, but glasses up for another PED performance enhancing drink toast, man. Making sure everybody's right on Gentlemen. point for what's about to take place yeah. in these next 10, 15 Thank minutes. Thank you. Man, what you think about that? That tastes pretty good, huh? Yeah. No I mixer think, needed. I like that. Yeah, bro. Nice little. Smooth. Yeah. Just, Ain't too sweet, but just enough. Just enough. Yeah, yeah. Bro, yeah. Enough. So, my personal friend of mine, uh, we actually ended up, he built the uh, Mercedes Sprinter vans wow. for Screwball, and they went all over the country and uh, sold Screwball out of this van. They lived in it for months, and, uh, and then they donated their proceeds, I believe, don't quote me, but I believe to the local schools. Yeah. Uh, it was just to help get their bro. mission out there and what they were doing and just get a name branding. No, he and, sold uh, a lot of $5 shots by Mercedes yeah, Sprinter yeah. vans. Yeah, Jonathan Lee with the Jonathan <laughs> Lee band was the one who did it. And uh, yeah, they've they've been That's crushing dope. it. Yeah. Crushing Great it. name, man. What's his yeah. last name? Uh, so Steve is the owner. Jonathan Lee was a friend of mine. Okay, nice, yeah. nice, bro. That's dope, yeah. bro. That is very dope, man. So so happy you made this product, bro, because uh, it's been keeping us right every week, man. Right, Make sure right. everybody's right on the same page. Drink, drink it, my coffee. You know, drinking it with his coffee. He showed me a cold <laughs> brew with the screwball. That's the way to go. That was real tasty. Yeah. Can you tell yeah, us yeah. about the origin of Scars and Stripes? Yeah, yeah. So uh, Scars and Stripes Coffee, our co-founder is actually here right now. Uh, we brought some guys from all over the country to come be a part of this event. Uh, I, I was thankfully asked by TK to come out and, and, uh, and be a part of the event. I want to get the coffee involved. He said, man, I need, I need you to play some softball. I said, all yeah. right, I'm in. Uh, so we're a faith-founded company. Uh, uh, scars and Stripes, Scars of Our Veterans, uh, Stripes, Isaiah 53.5, By His Stripes, We Were Healed. It's nice. kind of how it was uh, founded. It was more of a, a concept and a vision uh, before it was a coffee company. Yeah. Coffee became the catalyst to uh, you know, get the word out there, spread the mission, meet the vets, connect with more veterans. Uh, and so what we're doing is we've actually just started a nonprofit called Empower the Veteran, and we're using Empower Veterans to create a best-in-class um, veteran reintegration program. So we're going to try to uh, connect with the veterans after service and to help get them some training, some real, uh, um, you know, real-life experience job training, yeah. um, sales, um, you know, personal development. Uh, however, that you know, we're going to go about doing that. But um, we're using multiple workshops and, and all that kind of stuff to to get that out there. So with this with this company, it's been a blessing. I mean, opportunities like this, yeah. creating for veterans uh, that veterans normally wouldn't get the opportunity to be a part Absolutely, of. We've gotten to meet some amazing people here, be on this podcast with y'all. And, and, uh, and you know, it's all thanks to Scars and Stripes Coffee and what we're doing here. And so with this coffee, uh, you can't buy any of our products no matter what, online, in person, without 20% going directly back to a veteran. That's incredible. And, um, That's yeah, incredible. absolutely. I love yeah, to hear that. Been. Anything that we can do to help support our vets, guys, go to Scars and Stripes. Yeah, scarsandstripescoffee.com. Yeah, man. I, mean, I did a TV show called Six on the History Channel, short for SEAL Team Six, and yeah. the access that I got to work with a lot of veterans and, and uh, benefits that work with uh, veterans and soldiers. And there was a, a program called um, Operation Home, okay, and they build homes for injured war veterans. And every month they give away a home to uh, a war veteran. Mm -hmm. And Acme Brick sponsors the bricks, Maytag sponsors the washers, dryers, and, and I've been at some of these events when they're giving away these homes and how it touches their families. And there's another uh, in, uh, company that I've uh, been able to work with called Suiting Warriors. And people donate suits so when uh, veterans come yeah. back from war, they can have a, a fresh, clean suit and they step into the workplace and yeah. it gives them a competitive chance. So I really respect what you're doing. I had a chance to speak with some of your veterans over there and saying how this company has touched their lives. And that's, yeah. that's an amazing thing to hear. It, uh, it helped save my life, to be honest with you. Yeah. Um, I was down and out. I was in a rough place at the time and uh, came to me, the concept, it was only about four months old, and he sold me on the mission. He said, hey, we're trying to empower veterans with an opportunity to start their own small business within the company, um, and, and the sky's the limit. They can set up their own retail accounts, 
um, and uh, you know they could sell it to their friends and family online. But really, we're just trying to we're creating a veteran network for these vets to fall back on. For all of us, we stay connected. We check in on each other. We do a Monday morning muster, you know, um, and it, it's all about accountability. And yeah. uh, more than anything, you know, you could you could save somebody's life with a simple text message. Yeah. Man, it's you know, it's just staying connected. That's true. It's incredible, man. Yeah. And like, yeah. uh, you know, even on the show, we have a, a veteran on our show. He's a Navy guy. Not, I was not a Navy guy. He's been in the, in the Navy, Navy for 20 years now, right? So yeah. that's great. Coming up on 20 years here soon. So, you know, Mark and myself, were athletes. So there's so many parallels to the life and, and the transition between yeah. leaving the military and leaving the world of sports. Man. Absolutely. Just, yeah. You know, because you're so used to that locker room, that clubhouse feel, man. Camaraderie. And then when you step yeah. out into the general world of civilian life, right, into the general public, without that locker room anymore, it's a, it's a lonely feeling, man. Yeah. It's a lonely feeling, right? And even though, you know, and a lot of people have pride. They don't want to pick up that phone and call somebody oh, else, man. you know, that they that, that might still be attached to it or whatnot and let them know that they're going through it because we're all men, you know, we, yeah. we, we beat our chest. We were prideful men, right? And so, mm -hmm. I'm on our own too, but it, mm -hmm. the conversation is much needed, right? Yeah. That's, that's why we built this platform to be able to have these conversations yeah. and open it up and show today, man, there's a lot of people going through it, bro. Yeah. Like everything, you know, I, I always bring up in San Diego's home of, uh, you know, a ton of military people out there, 32nd Street, Miramar, right? I'll station Very familiar with, with that with that area over there. And I bring up that space and then Junior Seau, one of the greatest NFL football players ever to play the game. And his story is just so tragic to me because, bro, like, I can remember playing Tecmo Bowl with Junior Seau going out from yeah. around that edge. You know what I mean? And then, you know, what happened to his life, no one ever knew that he was going through what he was going through. You know what I'm yep. saying? So just we didn't hear till CTE outlet, until years yeah, later. Yeah, if yep. he had a platform and outlet to, to go through, maybe, you know, maybe we would still be able to, to, to see you and say, yeah, and he could be given some of that knowledge that he had because the man was, was long, played for a long time, played yeah. for much longer than the average football player for dang shit. Yeah. man, so kind of Edgar, you know, you got a lot going on right now too, bro. You know? I, I, yeah. <laughs> I got a lot got going a lot on. We kind of digressing for a second, man, and going back to what you were talking about. And, yeah. and, and thank you both for your services, right? Absolutely. Like, my tribe has always been my military buddies. Yeah. Like, when I got out of ball, like, that was the, 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 my family that really took me in. And it's funny you say when you talk about athletes and military guys, those are like my guys right now. And I, I do a bunch of, like, we had those serious conversations. And to me, being 36, I look at true strength as really being able to open up your mouth and say, hey, dude, I'm hurting. Yeah. It's okay to right? it's, okay. it's okay to say that, right? And it's it's important to have this conversation so really what you can be able to do for especially younger guys that they can probably cut the time in half by saying, all right, man, at this in my mid-20s, I'm going to start talking more about, you know, what I'm going through and what I'm battling through. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So what I – so kind of brings me to my next point, uh, we'll be shoes, man. Woobies. Yeah, I don't know if y'all have heard about Wooby Shoes. Uh, Anthony Ginnica, former Green Beret, uh, he started the company up. Uh, it's American-made shoe. Uh -huh. uh, manufacturers out in San Antonio. Uh, Green Beret owned uh, Woobies. Yeah. Uh, yeah, hey, dude. Frank, you got some Woobies on right now? I got some Woobies on right yeah, now. Fresh, you guys made them that bad. Yeah, I got the Cementos on. Those are the black. Uh, that's a leather tip. That ain't that plastic, that rubber. Like no, nah, it's the real tip. Yeah, you know, man. so I bought three pairs of these before yeah. <laughs> I even saw y'all here. Yeah. yeah. So you got the nice um, external sole, which is very uh, durable and flexible. You can bend it all up if you want as well. And then you got the internal sole that's inside of it. It has a nice rubbery that's sole all to it. Right there, yeah, yeah, it's all it purpose, down, right? Uh, like and then you got the tab on it, right? So you can pull yeah. off of it as well. Yeah. And then also what I love about it. You got the drain holes on the side, mm -hmm. yes, the drainage sir. holes, so you're getting some water breathe, sand. A little breathability right yeah, there. Yeah, a little breathability. You know? So yeah, um, a lot of guys in the law enforcement, uh, the military world, wear these shoes, and we begin a lot of support. And anytime you have a, 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 a American-made shoe, yep. right, with a former Green Beret behind it, dude, like, it's, it's, it's a lot of power into that. You climb um, mountains in them bad boys. You climb though. mountains in these guys, and these guys are – they're tested. Yeah. I put them through some stuff. <laughs> and y'all are located right here in North Texas, right? Yep, we're located okay. in oh, North Texas. Bro. I, I grew uh, up with a yeah, father man. that said, buy American or buy by America. Yeah. yeah. And so I respect American made shoes. Any, yeah. any, any Check out American some boobies, made product. Yep. Check it's, out some It's, it's woobieshoes.com. You also can hit us up on Instagram. It's Wooby Shoes uh, Instagram. Dope, so, I'll tell you, I wish, I wish we had had these when I was doing boardings over in the Gulf. 
Yeah. Uh, you yeah. know, on the boats, we were boarding teams. We did over 100 boardings in three months, my mm -hmm. second deployment. Yeah. And uh, these would have been great yeah. just to know that I'm not, we are not um, stomping around in soggy boots. Not, yeah. hit, them, not hit those shins on <laughs> that step going real. down. We yeah, actually bro. had access to the Special Forces Dive Academy down in the Key West about a month ago. Anthony Green Beret, he had a buddy there, so he got us in. And, you know, he told me about those guys wearing those shoes, and I just didn't put it into perspective until we got there. And I was like, oh, they really wear the shoes. Yeah. <laughs> For yeah. real, man. So yeah. it's just, he's so passionate behind it, man. We got a very a small organic team yeah. that's really trying to be uh, organic in everything we do yeah. and continue to just give back. It's the best way to go about doing it, man. Yeah. It's real. It's I love organic, the name because anybody in the military knows the, your Wooby blanket. Yeah. You know, yeah, your we Wooby all blanket, issued man. a Wooby Wobies. blanket. Your Wooby blanket. It didn't Wobies. matter where you were that like, had that Wooby blanket. Yeah, yeah. Bro. That's dope. That's dope. <laughs> so, Eggie, you were telling me about your, your podcast, man, as yeah. well? Yeah. So, we have a podcast of uh, me and my cousin. It's called The Lit Code. It's lit. Lit. lit, so L-I-T code. Yeah. So what lit stands for is to illuminate in thought. Yes. To bring light to your thought process, to bring yes. vision to your thought process. Um, and really just, that's a platform for us to really uh, pour into people, yeah. uh, to get them to understand the importance of the value that they bring. Everybody brings value. Yes, sir. Every single person. And when I hear y'all talk about people committing suicide, right, yeah. and walking around feeling like they have no value, I've been there before. Yeah. So if I can be able to speak to people and pour it to them, and to get them to start thriving in life, yeah. right? And getting them to uh, understand the importance and why they're here. That's what I'm passionate about and that's what our podcast is about. So Absolutely. we have the lit code and then I have my uh, my Instagram is called EJ Truck Talks yeah. uh, on Instagram. Yeah. Nice. So my truck and nature has always been one of my safe places. I can get in my truck, I cry. I write, I get on phone calls, yeah, yeah. I ride around, listen to BB King. Yeah. It's just yeah. my place. So what I do is I just make uh, videos probably nice. once we just give people words of encouragement. So that's EJ Truck Talks. EJ Truck Talks. Nice. Uh, hey, dot com. Yep. Y'all go follow him on Instagram right now. Yeah. And the lit code. Right now. Yep. The lit code. You can catch us on Spotify, iTunes. So I like, I like that name. So we are kind of starting to get into YouTube. Okay. Uh, our biggest following has been on Facebook. Nice. Uh, we have a lot of people that follow us on Facebook, so we post like the video action on Facebook and we put the link, and then from there we kind of dispense it off. But excellent. We're just trying to be patient with things, right? Yeah, and absolutely. I think, you know, go we're in a world now it. where everything is just go, 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 go. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, really having a good discernment as far as the decisions we're making yeah. and why we're doing what we're doing and what's absolutely. the importance of it. Access to information, man. Access yeah. to, to, to community, Yeah. right? And, and know that you're not the only one out there going through these experiences and, and, and there's someone else that might have a, a, a couple tips and pointers for you, right? Yeah. Like you said, information, bro. Yeah. Right. And I really like that name, illuminating yeah. thought. You. The, the yeah, lit code. Yeah. Appreciate it. Lit yeah. code, baby. L I L period I period T period C O D E, man. Y'all go follow that today, bro. Yeah. Man, we've had a great time today, man, and absolutely appreciate both of you gentlemen coming well, on the show. Thanks for having me. Y'all hey, go check us out on Noonish, man. I got absolutely. your teammate on there. Yeah, yeah, Mark. You know, I'm trying yeah. to pull it up out of him. You know, you're a quiet dude, you know? So yeah. I get it up out of him, Mark man. got a powerful story, man. Yes, he he's does. He's a great bro. individual. Yeah, he's an absolutely yeah. inspiring yeah. I liked him in high man. school, hated him in college, yeah. loved him in the pros. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we hook him. Hook him. <laughs> 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 I got to say something. Yeah. I got to say something. He Try scared me in camera. college. Yeah, man. yeah, he was a threat. Yeah, yeah, he's definitely a threat. Man. So yeah, absolutely. But now, thank you again. I oh, appreciate y'all. Thank man, you, man. Josh Amos, man. Thank, thank you all so much. Y'all check out scars and stripes, and y'all check out y'all's woobies. Buy yes, a couple sir. pairs. Absolutely. Yes, sir. Yeah. We'll see y'all next time on Noonish.